Welcome to episode 18 of the boat restoration series, where I'm converting a 1940 seaplane tender into an off-grid liveaboard. So back at the wheelhouse cabin at the entrance, both on the starboard and the port side uh, have been affected from some water damage where rainwater has worked its way in to the edge of the ply and gotten right into this horizontal plank. Uh, it's not so bad on the port side, but here on the starboard side, you can see about 85% of that plank is gone. I cut out all the rot and I scarfed in. I got two pieces of teak, made them fit in place and then used fiberglass to, to void the, to build a gap and to build a void up and, uh, and to waterproof it and, and uh, make sure it's secure. So this will do the job rightly and I'm happy with how it turned out. So once I removed all the rot, I assessed those timbers below, I'm checking it and uh, always make sure to check it with a nice sharp, uh, sharp object as well. I, I find that works best. You know, if you use anything blunt and, and kind of half attempt to, to check it, you'll never really know um, or you'll never break uh, the outer skin of the timber. You know, sometimes you'll see it's very rotten, but yet the outside might be, uh, it might give a false impression of how that the timber actually is. And especially tapping, I just find that checking with something sharp, you'll really find out because you'll find out the out, uh, outer layer if it's hard uh, and the same if it's gotten soft and the same with the inside, you know, you can check that the boat uh, at once. And uh, so once I did this, I then got a layer of uh, fiberglass in place and I cut them to nice size so I could really shape it. And before putting my teak in place, I made sure to put a tin coat of resin all around the surface area of the timber and that way I was guaranteed I'd get a nice adhesion to the fiberglass mat and the same for on top of it. So here on the port side you can see that this area is affected much less than on the starboard side. I scraped out any old rot or any loose bits of timber, any, anything that was soft. I then allowed it to air dry for a few days in the nice warm weather. We're lucky enough to get some consecutive sunshine. And then I did a, applied plenty of uh, wood hardener, did about two coats, so it wasn't gonna soak up anymore. And then I poured in plenty of resin to fill the void. So once the fiberglass was nice and dry, I just lightly hand sanded it, got it nice and flush, and that would allow me then to get more fiberglass over this and, and that it would adhere well. I then filled any voids with some finely cut fiberglass mat and resin, and it, so when, now it'll allow for some easy finishing touches when I wanna paint this. You're not gonna even notice, hopefully, you're not gonna, if I do a good enough job, you're not gonna notice that there was fiberglass here, and uh, let's see how that looks in the, in the near future.
So the exact same process as what I did with the starboard side here on the port side. I just built up some finely cut mat, some fiberglass mat, and, uh, and got that in place. The reason I didn't want to use big, big sections was I would have to use a lot more resin. And, uh, and although I might not be too shy with the resin, uh, it just allowed me to really finely build it up. Uh, I didn't want to, to use excessive amounts of, uh, of fiberglass mat either and this way allowed me to shape it nicely as well. If I was gonna have more surface area, it would make for some harder folding of the sheets. Um, and I found that this technique worked best for me for this area. Back to the wheelhouse roof canvas, I applied another layer of 10-year ex exterior gloss. It's really starting to look well. After a few more coats, this is gonna be nice and glossy, and that's exactly what I want because this is gonna repel any water and be fully waterproof. But uh, as I, I talked about in the last episode, working it up, you know, as you put each layer of exterior paint onto the canvas, it slowly, it soaks in. You're gonna need less and less after each coat and you start to fill that any voids and you just lose any look of that canvas and that's what you want. So you wanna basically just get a layer or two above the canvas and then for the future that it makes for easy upkeep when you want to, you just like lightly sand down the top layer back to uh, just shy of the canvas and get your another top coat on there. And that is it easy, makes for easy upkeep. That's exactly what I want. Applying another coat of exterior gloss to the engine cover. I just brushed it down lightly and this brushed off any dust or any debris that would be on there like dead flies and things. That seems to be a regular thing. Uh, even when the paint is, is, uh, is dry, Flies seem to love it, so uh, it's actually not as bad as, as I, I make it out to be. But just brushing it down lightly and uh, I'll get another coat on there. So getting back to the starboard stern, and this work has been long overdue. So anyone that might not be familiar with the work that was done here on the stern, we cut out a lot of rod, all this section that you can see here in, in grey uh, aluminium primer paint. This was uh, originally double diagonal, of course, like the entire hull. We, it was all affected by, by dry rot. We cut it all out and, and then we laminated up sheets of plywood, four sheets to make it fit this space. And this was the quickest way to get this sealed up. Uh, you can see we cut so close to the waterline as well. So it was quite nerve wracking, nerve wracking work for sure. We got plenty of chopped mat, fiberglass chopped mat in on the edges there, especially at the below, uh, just above the waterline. The, this is all marine grade plywood, um, so there's no concerns over this being not being uh, effective or being uh, strong to battle the elements. So there are still some small voids that I wanted to get to. I mixed up uh, resin with teak sawdust, and uh, this mix was a, a very nice. I made it a nice thick mix. I then worked that into any, any voids or any gaps and uh, that filled those gaps nicely. So I'm removing the chimney on the fore cabin so I can get the canvas in place on this roof. And it, you can really just see how secure this was in place. Like I was so surprised. I was really taken aback by, uh, by how strong this was. Just using 
once the screws were removed just using uh, the butyl rubber and the Sikaflex. You know, I added a bit of Sikaflex extra as like an extra bit of security uh, as like a, a, a gasket, you know, to, to prevent any water leaching in there. And um, really, really incredible how strong this was. Like I was using a lot of my force to get this, get this off the roof and incredible. So it just goes to show you, you probably don't even need the Sikaflex. Uh, the butyl rubber is strong in itself, uh, but it's good to have it for, for extra security. So we moved the boat over to the opposite side of the jetty so we can properly get to work on closing up the hole in the hull on the port side. From this angle you can really appreciate the design and, and cut of the hull. It's just incredible. Uh, what, a, what a lovely boat, really you can appreciate it here and uh, I'm always taken back by it when you just stand back and, and see it. And now that we got a bit more work done on, above, uh, above the hull, uh, it really starts to shine. Uh, I didn't film any of the process of, of putting down the canvas on the deck. It's the same process as what we did with the wheelhouse roof. Um, and I just thought it's a lot of painting, a lot of gluing, and a lot of the same kind of stuff that you guys would have seen already. But um, yeah, again, same thing what I did in the wheelhouse cabin roof. And you can check out the last episode to see that. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. So my father and Alex, my cousin, got to work on helping with the bow. They cut frames to replace any old rotten frames to secure those in place. And then in preparation for the plywood. So then we'll get the plywood laminated up and we will see that in the next episode. tacky mess was left on top of the steel plate there um, and that was quite the mission to get that off the uh, to get that off the plate just using a knife um, probably would be better to use some sort of solvent here but uh, I just used this at hand and, and it worked well yeah of course it took time but um, I got it done
So I'm cutting the canvas in order to get the chimney back in place. I'm leaving just over half an inch uh, about uh, of canvas uh, underneath the steel plate. So the steel plate will sit down on top of this. And uh, this is what I want. And, and rather than having the canvas flush with the steel plate, and this is why I removed the, the, the chimney in the first place. And it will just guarantee that no water is going to get in underneath that canvas. And after, after taking up this section of canvas, using having to use two hands, uh, it was tough. And you can really see I had to use strength here as well. And, uh, and that we can safely say that the, the gesso glue uh, is sticking, has done its job and it's stuck down the canvas well. So I cut my butyl rubber, I lay it down in place, I then test fitted the chimney three times to make sure it would fit in place and get it on there. What I really should have done, uh, because I've, I've hit a, a, an obstacle now where I have put the, the chimney in place, I, put my, I screwed my screws back in place and I've noticed that it shifted about three mil in one direction. Although, you know, even though the chimney is on the actual fireplace on the stove inside, it's still on the roof, it could still, it could still move, uh, it could still shift. So unfortunately, I've missed my screw holes and a few of my screws wrong. So, I have decided that I'll go with, with steel bolts and this is actually a better option anyway. So it's actually, it's nearly a good thing that it failed here um, because the steel pl uh, bolts will be much better. Uh, and also it will look better uh, rather than just having screws in, in place. Um, I will go with dome head uh, steel, steel bolts and uh, that will look the part. Also I do want to get another coat of, of paint here on, on the steel on the plate and uh, that can allow for it now while I get the bolts and get that done. So I removed the chimney for now. And now just like that, we're back to a solid week of, of bad weather. It looks like there's two more days of this weather and then we're back to sunshine. So good things come back around and we will start to make some good progress. We'll get back working at the hole and get all these little jobs ticked off. Well, this is a big job. So guys, 
Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click that notification icon to get notified whenever I upload new episodes. And also I have a PayPal link in the description if you feel like supporting my project there. I would be forever grateful and it would make uh, buying all these sort of uh, necessities for the boat uh, much easier. So thanks a million guys. I appreciate all the support. I'm reading all the comments even though I might not reply to them all. I am reading them. Um, so I thank you for the support and the increased uh, viewership. And um, as always guys, stay productive and have fun creating. Uh.